Hey everybody, Homeslice Henrik here, and in today's video, I become the villain of the story. Today, I'm using a team that I think can only be described as evil. The team features many debuffing moves, and combining it with some truly massive stat products to overall leave opponents having a very bad day. The team features a Leaf Tornado Superior, Dugong, and Carbink, and this team took me from 2500 ELO to just shy of 3100 ELO in one day of Go Battle Day. So without further ado, let's hop into some selected matches and let's take a look at the team. Hopping into the first match, we see a very positive lead, Superior into Shadow for Alligator. Opponent safe switches into Annihilate, and I'm just going to stay in here with the Superior and fire off the Leaf Tornado. It's a 50% chance to lower the opponent's attack by two stages, and it does work this time. So now my opponent's attack is a fraction of what it used to be. So I can send in the Carbink, tank that damage like it's nothing, and you best believe... I am fully farming this down with resisted rock throws because they can't do any damage anymore. It's just, oh my goodness, it is, it is an incredibly unfortunate team if you go up against it because it can be extremely, extremely irritating. In the back, my opponent has their own Carbink, so they are extremely weak to Superior. This definitely works in my favor. I'm going to bank a move, send in Superior. Opponent is going to send in the Shadow for Alligator, and I can just go straight Leaf Tornado and guarantee win this game. The Leaf Tornado debuffs again. Oh my goodness. So their Annihilate got debuffed, and now they switched in a for Alligator. And guess who's getting debuffed as well? I build up to the back-to-back -back Leaf Tornadoes. This, I mean, they're minus two. I don't have to shield it. It is just going to be the Hydro Cannon. I can fire off the back-to-back -back Leaf Tornadoes. I go for an Undercharge. Opponent shields it. They're now minus four attack, and they just resign the match. They do not want to play anymore. Moving to the next match, we need Superior into Annihilate. So we see another Annihilate, this one on the lead. As I mentioned, Leaf Tornado is a 50-50 chance at a debuff. So some games like last game, you'll get very lucky. Other games, like this one, not as much. But the nice thing here is in this matchup, an Aerial Ace is the same amount of Vine Whips as a Leaf Tornado. So they respect the potential Aerial Ace. And now, I've already gotten a shield from them. I can fire off the harder hitting Frenzy Plant. And the Frenzy Plant just does not KO. I decide to send in the Dugong, as Dugong is very bulky. Although, to be fair, this entire team is monstrously bulky. Opponent is going to send in Magnezone. Magnezone firing off their charge attack right away. I will respect the potential wild charge, and they do go for the wild charge. Now, I can fire off the Icy Wind. Drill Run would massively KO, so they are going to commit the shield, but I just want to lower their damage output a little bit. Opponent is going to throw on very nice timing there as they fire off their move just before I get there, and unfortunately, a mirror shot does actually KO. They need a wild charge to knock out here. A mirror shot is not going to cut it. They go for the mirror shot. That's not going to KO. I can now pick up the knockout with the Leaf Tornado because they have lowered their defense by throwing an earlier wild charge. In the back, it's Empoleon. They try for a catch. They do not get it. And I'm going to get a last second Leaf Tornado. Empoleon is Carbink's worst nightmare. I need a debuff and I get it. And watch this. This is the match that made me call this team evil. If you want 100% transparency, Empoleon should destroy Carbink. They have a massive energy lead, but I get the 50-50 Leaf Tornado, and now they can't really do any damage. They have super effective Hydro Cannons. They have double super effective Steel Wings, and it doesn't matter. Carbink makes the Moon Blast. That plus the Rock Throw KOs, and we take a win. We had no business winning that game. We've got a thoroughly miserable lead in the next match, leading Superior into a Pokemon that beats this entire team, Shadow Ferrothorn. You already know what I'm going to do. Stay in with Superior, go for the Leaf Tornado debuff, but the luck is not with me. I don't get the debuff on the first try. I'm going to shield, and you already know what I'm going to do. I'm going to farm up, and I'm going to click Leaf Tornado again. 50-50 chance. Let's do this. Odds are the opponent is probably going to be weak to Superior in the back, and they're relying on Ferrothorn to be their grass type that beats other grass types. The second time is the charm, and I do get the debuff, and that means that I can survive the Shadow Flash Cannon decently well. I'm just going to now that I've gotten the debuff start firing off these Frenzy Plants. They're double resisted, but they will add up a little bit over time. So I'm going to fire off another Frenzy Plant. Frenzy Plant is going to connect. Opponent trying to make it to the Flash Cannon, and they do not get to fire off that move. In comes Manti, and I'm immediately pivoting out into the Dugong. Anytime there's a Flyer, I'm basically just going to be safe switching into the Dugong, because if they stay in, it's a winning matchup for the Dugong, but I'd love if they switched out, because 
My end goal for this team is to have every flyer have a horrible, very bad, no good day stuck against my Carbink. As I mentioned, I'm basically becoming the villain with this team. This team is not a team of my own creation. Uh, one of my viewers actually beat me while running this team. I don't believe they had the Leaf Tornado though. It was Ghost Tyrant and it ended a pretty nice unbeaten streak that I had in a previous video. So I was like, you know what? I'll try it out. I'll add Leaf Tornado and this team worked amazingly for me. Oh my goodness. Here, I believe my opponent actually thought that I was KO'd, but I actually lived that on one HP. So they end up throwing a move, which is a bit unfortunate. I send in the Carbink and in the back, it's a Shadow Gligar. And this is very okay for Carbink. Carbink... I mean, these rock throws add up quite a bit, and I can survive a dig. That's the important deciding factor in this matchup, is one dig does not KO, and they can never airy lace me, so I'm just in a very comfortable position to close out the game. I fire off the rock slide. Rock slide opponent is going to call the bait. I'm going to try and go for a catch. I don't get the catch, but they're forced to fire off an airy lace to get rid of me, and then they don't have the energy to make it to a dig versus the carbink. Opponent sees the writing on the wall and concedes the match. We've got a lost lead in the next match, Superior into Mantine. I'm going to throw one Vine Whip, safe switch into Dugong. I have hella frame drops. That's another thing that kind of made me want to run a little bit more of a toxic team, was the frame drops make it very difficult if you're trying to win or if you're trying to run anything fun whatsoever. Opponent is going to send in Empoleon. Empoleon fires out their energy right away, and I get an Ice Shard for free. That is quite nice. I'm going to look to massively overfarm, but even with the free ice shard, I'm not going to be able to force a shield unless my opponent makes a mistake and overfarms. And they know that. They're going to fire off their energy right away to deny my potential drill run. I'm just going to let this through, and I'm going to send in Superior and look for the farm down. Superior, able to get the farm down, and now they send in Mantine, and I'm able to get a catch onto the Carbink. So I waste their energy. Let's see, what do they have in back? Oh boy, I'm I'm just hard countered here. They have a Steelix. This is very, very rough. Steelix is farming up so much energy to a potential Earthquake. Tough call to make. I shield, and I shield a Psychic Fangs. This is absolutely horrific. Oh my goodness. I'm gonna go for the Rock Slide bait, thinking maybe they'll shield a potential Moonblast, but they absolutely will not. Now I'm debuffed. They farmed back up to an Earthquake. I'm going to shield, and it's another Psychic Fangs. Either they are the best baiting trainer ever, or they are just on Breaking Swipe. I'm going to look to farm up a ton of energy switch into Superior, and I get the CMP Sack Swap. I get the move winning CMP. I get the Leaf Tornado debuff, and I catch their move. Is it the Earthquake? No, so they're on Breaking Swipe. They don't actually have them, or I guess potentially crunch. They don't have a move that can hit the carving for super effective. Back in comes Mantine. I will fire off the Frenzy Plant. If they don't shield this, they're getting KO'd. The Frenzy Plant does KO. Back in comes the Steelix. But this has been a war of attrition. But suddenly Carbink is a lot healthier than the Steelix. That CMP Sack Swap potentially giving us a way back into this game. The opponent has so much energy though, and they're going to keep spamming out these Psychic Fangs, lowering my defense more and more, but I mean, double resisted Dragon Tails are not going to do a whole lot of damage. I go for the Rock Slide, they commit the shield, they're firing off another Psychic Fangs, and this will take me below 25%. I'm pretty low on the carving. I make it to the rock side. This is double resisted. Is it enough? Did we beat the hard counter? Yes, we did. We rock throw down as the match timer expires. Picking up a pretty okay lead in the next match. Superior into Dugong. This is another matchup where I love Leaf Tornado. I can bait with the Leaf Tornado. Dugongs love to shield. And I have a 50-50 shot of getting a debuff. Unfortunately, I don't get the debuff there. And I don't actually get the Icy Wind catch either. Opponent sends in Annihilate, and this is very okay. They go for the Night Slash, and they boost. Okay, that is not okay. I take back everything I just said. Scrap all of that. This is no longer okay. Annihilate, boosting, very unfun if you're not the one who has the boosted Annihilate. I'm going to send in Carbink, and if I can get the Shield Call right on the boosted Shadow Ball, I can farm down. So I will commit the shield. It is the Shadow Ball. That's very nice. And now I'm going to be able to get the Rock Throw farm down. And I do get to exit with some energy. Opponent sends in the Dugong. So whatever's in back is not a fan of Carbink. The Dugong does have a massive energy advantage, which is what they're going to need. They can make it to two drill runs. But look at this absolute filth right here. Carbink tanks two super effective drill runs. But 
Why would I tank one when I can catch one where it's going to be resisted onto Superior? In the back, it's Dragonair, and you already know it's Leaf Tornado time. I'm firing off the Leaf Tornado, looking for the debuff. The debuff still will not go, but I make it to one final Leaf Tornado. Can we get the debuff? Come on, Superior. And we do get the debuff. Their attack is now at minus two, and I can send in the Carbink. Carbink, since their attack's debuffed, I can pretty comfortably survive an Aqua Tail, so I am going to tank one. The issue is, I think they're going to make another, and they do make another, and now it all comes down to if I can farm down a Dugong. I'm a bit torn. Do I go for fast move pressure, or do I go for charge moves? I decide to go for charge moves. I fire off the Rock Slide. The Rock Slide is shielded. Carbink on one HP, farms down the Dugong, and takes the win. Tough lead in the next match, Superior versus Guzzlord. I throw one Vine Whip, safe switch here, and this is actually a team that I saw a couple times. I kept seeing Guzzlord double water, and if they send in Jellicent, you always Icy Wind first. That may seem counterintuitive because you're like, why are you throwing a resisted move? But look at what this allows you to do. You can now survive two Shadow Balls. And this means that I can make two drill runs and force a shield from a Jellicent counter swap. This is incredibly useful tech that I'm not sure if I was told or if I ended up just discovering it in a match, but it's incredibly valuable. Look at this. Shadow Ball does not KO. I make the drill run, and unless they want to give up switch advantage, they're going to have to give me a shield. And shield advantage is very, very helpful. They're going to get a massive farm down, but I have a superior. Superior, the definition of bulk. Honestly, this whole team is just monstrously bulky. The Shadow Ball will connect. I'm just looking for the farm down. Unfortunately, another one of those frame drops. Again, I was just, I was trying to run fun stuff. I was getting so frustrated by the frame drops there. Another frame drop as I try and farm down. I send in the Carbink. It's Feraligator in the back, and it's the non-Shadow Feraligator. This means that, I mean, they're going to be able to outpace me. They're going to make three Hydro Cannons, but that's okay. I can survive one Hydro Cannon, and then I just need to continue the onslaught that is Carbink. These Rock Throws tearing through the Feraligator. They go for the Hydro Cannon. It's a Charge Attack Priority Tie as I fire off the Rock Slide. Rock Slide does get shielded up by the Feraligator. Feraligator tries to CMP time me, but I'm not going to let that happen because I need this farm. So, I'm just going to look to overfarm slightly and go for the rock side before they're able to make it to another Hydro Cannon. Because, even though I've lost a lot of HP, Guzzlord is completely walled here. There's nothing Guzzlord can do to hit me for any meaningful damage. They're forced to go for resisted Crunch. And Crunch, not going to cut it. So... I'm going to be able to make it to a rock slide. I didn't want to risk trying for the moon blast because I have all that energy on superior. So I can rock slide, combo play with the frenzy plant. And in a game where we never had switch or good alignment, we get the win. And that's what the flexibility of debuffs and bulk can get you. In the next match, we lead Superior versus Shadow Alolan Ninetales. In this cup, I've mainly encountered them running Charm, and Charmers love to shield. It's their favorite hobby, so it's an incredibly safe Leaf Tornado bait. I don't get the shield, but one and a switch means I get the catch of the double resisted Weather Ball, and I sneak an Ice Shard as well, so now I'm up on energy. This is quite nice, as this forces the Magnezone to throw immediately, or I could force a shield with a Drill Run. I decide to commit the shield, as they will full send the Wild Charge, and now... Even though I have gone for Icy Wind in this situation previously to guarantee the knockout, I will go for the Drill Run, and the opponent actually lets it go, so it proves to be very important that I did go for that Drill Run. They're going to send back in the Ninetales. Ninetales will be met with the Drill Run. This will not be enough to knock out, but it will do some very solid damage. I don't really want to give up Switch Advantage, because the Superior Carbon Core in alignment is just so strong. Opponent... I think they may have accidentally overtapped there. They don't get the move. In the back, it's Empoleon, and I'm just going for the Frenzy Plant. Frenzy Plant, I'm expecting they've seen Leaf Tornado. They'll try and call the bait, but they shield. I should live to make it to another Frenzy Plant. They make my life a whole lot easier by throwing a move because I get the Vine Whip through. It looks like that, in hindsight, I would have lived one extra Steel Wing to make this Frenzy Plant, but it makes it a lot easier when they let me sneak by throwing a move. Frenzy Plant KOs, and we're able to take the win. Hopping into the final match, and we've got a very tough lead, much like the Ferrothorn lead. This is trouble, as everything I have is double resisted, and 
The rest of my team takes super effective damage from grass. So I go for the Leaf Tornado, fishing for the debuff. I don't get the debuff from the Leaf Tornado. As you see, some games, when the Leaf Tornado pops off, it can completely flip games. And then there's other situations where having it does make it a little bit more complicated. Now I'm going to fire off the Frenzy Plant. That does so much damage for being double resisted. And it looks like we have a battle of toxic teams on our hand. As I send in the Dugong, I get some Ice Shard damage on the Victory Bell. And they send in Carbink. Carbink will be met with the Drill Run opponent. Nice counting. They're going to fire off the Rock Side before I can make it to the Drill Run. The next Drill Run won't KO. So I don't see a point in shielding. I'm just going to send in my own Carbink now. And now, I'm just going to go for a massive amount of energy on my Carbink. They do have enough for the Moonblast. I am going to respect it with a shield, and they do go for the Moonblast. Okay, that ends up working out pretty nicely. And now, I can just try and commit to a whole huge farm down. And we actually simultaneously switch. I can't get to the move. I tried to go for a catch, but I get the farm down. And now let's see, what do they have in the back? I know they have a very low health carving. I'm looking at the top right. They have Skeleturge. I throw two in the move. Oh, wait, that's banned. It's an Alolan Marowak. I haven't seen that thing in ages. I forgot that there could be other fire ghost types because that's how hard Alolan Marowak fell off. Like, I saw Skeleturge. I was like, okay, I do two in the move. But it's a Alolan Marowak, so I actually can't do that, which is a bit awkward. Here, I know I can take a Bone Club. Bone Club, not a great move. And... As long as I see the fire spin start, which I do, I can just pick up the knockout with the rock slide. Their car bank is way too low. I'm just going to get a full farm down. And in the battle of toxic teams, I'm able to take the win. All in all, I think this is a terrific climbing team. As I mentioned, after a lot of top lefting just to try and get the 20 sets done to get the Stardust, I started the day about 2,500, and I ended just shy of 3,100 ELO. So it's a team that worked very well throughout the course of the day at a wide range of ELOs. I did have a couple negative sets, but the vast majority of them were positive, as you can see by the 600 ELO climb. And I do think that it's a very good strategy if you're looking to climb rank in the Great League Remix Cup. I am aware that once the strategy of Leaf Tornado is being made more public, people could start shielding less, which would be a bit uncomfortable, but since I had a pretty nice run with the team, I did want to demonstrate it, and I actually found out after the fact that this is a team that uh, King GBL was also running, and I believe Zare as well, so it's a team that's definitely out and around. I think I'm the only one running the Leaf Tornado version, but I do think that Leaf Tornado can really add some pretty funny win cons where otherwise there would just be none whatsoever. Anyways, thank you guys so much for watching. If you're enjoying the content, make sure to leave a like and subscribe to the channel if you haven't. And a special thank you as always to our members here on YouTube. The support guys provide is sincerely appreciated. So thank you guys oh so very much. And until next time, I've been Home Slice Henry.